Hello everybody! Welcome back to Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. In this episode we're not proceeding with the main story. In this short episode, which I will put in the side jobs playlist, will where I am going through the city. What can I find in the city? I'm gonna bring up the map real quick. Here we have uh, all of those yellow things. Uh, all the different areas that I can go to from here uh, and they, they will be on every kind of map I, if I go out on the, the one at the bottom at least highway then I there will be a yellow uh, surface like the one there is in the city that will just say city of Roland or Roland but all right well as you can see here on the map there are these red these squares with with different different colors. Uh, there's the Bracer Guild, uh, which is the red one. That's one we have already been in, so we're not gonna go into that building and see what we can find in there. Uh, then there's the lodgings. That's a hotel or an inn or a place you can stay where you can rest with your characters. Uh, it usually costs money for them to rest at such an inn through the main story you can also ha there are also chances where you get a room for free or something like that. Um, then there's the Opal factory we've already been in there too so we're not gonna go in there. Uh, then there's the Septian church the purple one. We're gonna go in there real quick because there's not a lot of blood to it. It's it is what it says. It's a church. Uh, you, some of the side jobs that you get on uh, will go through there. So yeah. Uh, and then there are all the green ones, which are various shops, which differ f uh, all from general stores to restaurants to weapon and armor shops. So. Let's check out these different things. Let's go and check out the lodgings first. I'm gonna head over there immediately. This is the one. Hotel Roland. The lodgings. Alright. And here's pretty much what you can do here at the hotel. You can talk to this guy who stands at the front desk and then you can rest. We've got an unusual guest staying here at the moment. She appears to be a student from the Genis Royal Academy. I've heard she's come here to study about Roland. Yeah, and then comes the options. Where you can talk, you can do that with, with every other guy or woman. or You can do that with everyone you stumble upon, every NPC. And then you can rest. We're gonna just do it right now. Click here. Yeah, it's we spent 20, 20 Mira for the night. Yeah, we'll just do that. It doesn't cost an awful lot to use to to rest, and then there's also the leave button, which just which just makes you leave, of course, obviously. All right, then let's go check out the Septian Church, the one here, Roland Chapel. It's not a lot to it. There is uh, his Father here, Father Divine. Estelle, you seem to be rather cheerful today. Did something wonderful happen in your life? Yeah, we're talking about that we got to be bracers. Mm, joyous occasions and things go well. Yeah, please guide us. Great ideas. And then there's a nun. And then you can go upstairs on the balcony up there. And that's pretty much it. All you can do in this church. Alright. Then we're gonna go to the various shops before we go in and check out all of the menu stuff. This is just a... You could kind of say it's like a filler episode or something like that. Um, because it will be over in the side shops... Si side jobs playlist. What am I rambling about? Well, we've already been in here, but let's just go through it again. We have uh, this uh, general goods store where you can buy these bombs and healing and 
search your things and you can buy ingredients for your cookbook. So that's what you can do here at the general goods store. And then sometimes there will also be an opportunity for buying um, the libel news issues, for example, or book and reading material. Which this is the store that we will get those books from, will, which I will be making episodes for the story reading playlist. Alright, let's move on. <coughs> Alright, then we have this arms and guards, the weapon and armor merchant. Hey there, is Dungeon. Good afternoon, Mr. Elgin. Good afternoon, sir. Correct me if I'm wrong, but today is your last day of training, isn't it? I seem to remember you saying something about it the last time I had you run the store. Yes, that's right. So how'd your training go? That emblem on your chest means you shouldn't have expected anything less from Cassius kids. But we're still braces in training. I see. But, well, I knew you were going to have to give up your part-time job here sooner or later. Yes, I'm really sorry about that. That's what it. I knew it'd happen eventually when I hired you on. It's a shame, though. There's hardly anyone out there with as good an eye for you for weapons as you. But that's the path you've chosen. So get out there and show us what you've made of. Made of. Yeah. Okay. So here's the shop. I can buy a lot of stuff, and I can buy stuff for for my guys as well because they have the lowest e level equipment they can get right now that I can even buy these leather boots and it will give them a boost I get I guess my Estelle and Joshua doesn't even have boots either that or their boots have defense plus one because these give the defense plus two yeah all right and then we have the the various weapons there will pretty much always be a weapon for each each uh, unique character who uses a unique kind of weapon in the weapon shops. So th that's pretty handy to have. Alright. Well, that's pretty much it for this shop. Uh, oh, you can also buy these uh, earrings and bracelets and bangles and stuff like that. They prevent uh, ki various status effects when you're in combat. For example, this prevents poison, silver earring, means that if an enemy poisons you, you resist the poison, and then you won't get poisoned. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Alright, let's go over to the last shop in the city, which is this bar. There's a lot of people in here, but not, we're not going to talk to them, we're only going to talk to this guy. Uh, that has this shop where he sells food. I'm gonna buy one of each because I can then add them to my cookbook whenever I eat them. And then I'm also gonna buy this wholesome pasta, which also makes me learn that recipe. Eat wholesome pasta, learn wholesome pasta recipe. Alright. So that's what you can do in this shop. It looks like the female merchant over there came from Rosie. Not only does she seem smart, but she's extremely attractive as well. Then again, she'd probably never give me the time of day. Her accent is a little different though. Yeah, Bosa is uh, like a big trade city in the game. Which uh, we'll go into. Uh, in uh, the next chapter of the game, chapter one. This is actually just a prologue chapter. You could say there is five chapters in the game, but it actually only gets up to chapter four. Yeah. All right. We're gonna go through the menu now. Yay! More listening to me rambling about stuff that probably doesn't even matter to a lot of you guys but we're gonna go through it because someone might be interested in the game um, what the game has to offer if you want if you would want to buy the game yourself and play it yourself <coughs> so yeah here we have the status 
where I can view the status of Joshua and still um, there are these uh, status effects that you get in combat they won't affect you affect you out of combat you will lose all status effects once you're out of combat unless you were KO'd or uh, unless your character are, were dead or knocked out or whatever they can they still have that knockout after combat um, which means that when a character is, it is knocked out then they won't be capable of ach uh, achieving ex experience in combat for, for the first thing and then they also won't be capable of uh, doing combat I guess alright so we have we're still here uh, she's level 3, 138 HP, 50 EP, and 37 CP. The CP grows as you do more combat and attack some more things and get attacked some more. Alright, and then there's all this parameter, those pa these parameters, strength, def, ATS, ATF, speed, dex, dexterity, Agility, move, range, and uh, they will of course be different for Joshua. He has more move than Estelle, but less range because he's using daggers. Of course, as you can see on the picture, and Estelle is using a staff. Makes sense. And not, and you can also see the equipment of your characters here. I see. Um, it's still both still and Joshua actually doesn't have any boots. So even those plus two defense boots would, would have increased their stats a little bit. The defense par uh the defense stat stat under the parameters. <coughs> I should probably focus on getting a still these boots that give de that gives uh, a good amount of defense and a uh, vest or body armor or stuff something that that also gives the defense because I'm gonna let it still be the tank or some yeah and then uh, I should focus on giving Joshua some better weapons because he's gonna deal out a lot of damage tons of damage yeah all right <clears throat> and then you can also see the crafts of the characters and the S crafts she still has Moral as a craft, and she has Pommel as her S craft. And Joshua has Dual Strike as a craft, and Sever as S craft. Alright, that's the status window. Then there's the equip window, where you could pretty much see everything that you could see over at the status window, except at the status window, you had a little picture too. Ain't that cute? Alright, in the equip window, you can go in here and select what kind of weapon you would select, you would want to use on your character. And if you unequip, you get this practice weapon that doesn't increase your stats at all. But when you select the crutch staff, then you obviously increase your stats. And there's this leather vest. Doesn't re get a replaced item. Mm -hmm. And then there's the footwear or the boots. And then there's the accessory where you can. Sometimes you can also get the defense on these accessories, which will be like a work helmet or. Yeah, other stuff that gives defense. What else can I say about it? And then there's Joshua. Alright, that's the equipment. And then there's the augment window. We've already gone through this in episode 2 where we learned about augments and quartz and sepith and all that stuff. Uh, I should explain now before I forget it again because I didn't explain it in episode 2 that uh, like Mira is the currency. Yeah, yeah. The sepith is like a different currency which you use only for these augments and uh, quads and w when you want to uh, release a new slot for example if I want to release 
this slot on the still, I will probably need 30 of each of the elemental quartz, the earth, water, fire, wind quartz. No, not the quartz, the sep if I'm mixing up the words again. Sorry. You will need 30 sep if 30 of each sepith from the earth, the water, the fire, and the wind. Alright, that's to release a new slot, and then if you want to buy a special quartz, you'll probably need sepith from that particular type, for that particular type of quartz. For example, when I was buying this HP1 quartz, which is a water quartz, I would need water elemental type sepith to buy this quartz <coughs> and like for Joshua when I wanted to buy if I wanted to buy this time quartz I would need time sepith and so on uh, some qu some quartz though like uh, the mirage ones the silver ones they also they actually have some other um, some other sepith elemental value in them so if I want to like buy one of these mirage quartz I know that I think it's something that's called uh, e either EP or EP cut um, I don't know if it's actually the mirage one or the space one but it doesn't matter you'll have to pay for whatever the things cost so if it like has an ele elemental value of both space and mirage you will have to pay both space and mirage sepith to get that type of quartz uh, so it's not only limited to like uh, i i want a time quartz i can't get anything else on that quartz uh, it's not like i can upgrade this one but you can get a special uh, special time kind of quartz yeah but this but like uh, there was explained in episode 2, it's not like you can ex install every quartz into every slot. Like this one, in the middle of Joshua, you can only install time quartz, which is which this one is. Alright, and also, here in the augments menu, there are some opal arts, or arts, that you can actually cast out of combat. Like this tier. I can't cast it now, because it has a healing effect and my characters are already at full health so there's no uh, no meaning to doing that so I can't do it the game won't allow me alright that's the open window then there's the item window and here's just an overall menu of all the items that I have then I can see the weapons menu I don't have any other weapons than, than the ones I have equipped right now on Joshua and Estelle same with armor and then there's the healing stuff here's where I can find all of my bombs and all of the food that I have purchased uh, like it's set in episode 3 at the end then there are these two types of food there is this type of food which is, which is to go food and there's then there's that sitting food uh, the sitting food is like the wholesome pasta I bought over at the bar where they can't bring it along as an item they had to have to eat it on the spot uh, it will be the same if I make that particular type of food on the ground all right let's move on then there's the quartz menu I don't have any other quartz than the ones I have installed so there's nothing in that menu and there's the items menu uh, special items I guess uh, like this Junior Bracer emblem. All right, and then there's the ingredients. The ingredients I use for cooking, and then there's all the books. Then there's the Bracer note notebook, recipe book, monster guide, Libel Kingdoms map, and the Libel news issue. Uh, let's go into the recipe recipe book Hook really quick. We can see the other icon. There, here's this maple cookie that we got from the shopkeeper at the general goods store Rinan. that is a to go uh, kind of food and then there's that wholesome pasta which is a sitting food uh, you'll only be capable of eating that 
at the spot. If if I make this recipe right here and now, then I won't be capable of moving around it with it. I won't get it as an item. I will heal these 180, that, which it heals. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. They they of course work on the whole party instead of just one person. All right, that's the recipe book. And then uh, there is the monster guide. You can see here all of the different monsters that I have encountered so far. I've only encountered four, the muffs and the dirty rats. There will be a ton of other monsters in this book when we uh, when we advance further into the game. Uh, but for now there's only these four because I haven't been anywhere else. <coughs> There will also be uh, like different pages, like you can see out in the left, it says Roland. Uh, but there will also be a page for Bose and another region called Ruan and Sites, one is called, and Grantsel. Yeah, so there will be a ton of stuff in this book. Then there is the map. You can see on the yellow arrow that this is where we are at the moment and then there is a ton of stuff to go through. We're gonna start, the prologue chapter is here in the Roland region and then we're gonna head west over to the Bozo region and then after that we're gonna head more west, uh, southwest to Ruan, the Ruan region region and then we're gonna go east to the sites region and then at the end we're gonna probably be at the Granza region. I don't know if there's anything more to the game other than those five regions. I mean this is in fact a trilogy and there are other games out already also in an English version but I've bought this one off of Steam so I'm not probably not gonna be playing the other game anywhere near the f in the near future but yeah this is the map have a good look around spot everything you can yeah and that's then there's the Erebonian Empire to the north and the Republic of Calva to the east yeah all right and then there's this libel news issue there are five pages it's not gonna be th those story reading episodes are not gonna be totally long if the books doesn't just doesn't aren't that long uh, if it's like this five pages probably gonna be I don't know ten minutes probably all right that's that book and then there's the bracer notebook there is also a ton of stuff to read in here. There's all these magics. You can have a, you can pause the video if you'd like to read them all. I, I don't know them all, but I, I, I'll deal with it. I'm fine. And then there's this one. Have a good look around. Pause the video. And this one. All right. And then there's all the types of quads, we're gonna do the same. Pause the video if you would like to watch them. And here too. And quads number three, page number three. And page number four. And to onwards to augments. Augments. Probably already know this. But for the sake of all of you that don't, devices made for per augments, augments, devices made for personal use that have an array of effects due to the installation of septium crystal circuits known as quartz, made to order with many combinations possible. Orbal arts, magic which can be used by exploring the power of augments, the type of which is determined by the quartz. In order to harness this force, EP energy points is required. EP can be covered at hotels, 
int and by using EP charging items or stations. Forgot to mention that game. All right, quartz circuits made from septium fragments. Sep Placed in an augment to use arts, each quartz has a value, elemental, times strength, the total value of which determines what arts can be used. Alright, that's page one. Page two. Sepith. Each uh, septium fragment and material for quartz. Elemental properties, earth, water, fire, wind, time, space and mirage. And then there are all those things. Uh, there's the earth, which is for physical damage as well as defense. Then there's water for recovery, cold attacks, uh, and so on. And there's fire for fire attacks, obviously, and offense. And then there's wind, which is for evasion and wind attacks. And then there's the time for action speed and arts time. Uh, I don't know about that one because most time arts that I got later in the game were ones that had area of effect damage. But well, all right. I if I would I, if I wanted some area of effect damage, I would want to get a good amount of time quads mixed with some space and mirage. So they, yeah, I'm probably gonna get that for Joshua sometime. <coughs> <coughs> then there's the space, symbolizes space, movement, effect range, ETC. And then there's mirage, perception, awareness, ETC. And then there's the slots. Holes used to install quads. Each slot that is opened increases the total EP that an augment can store. But the extent to which depends on the owner, fixed elemental slots can only take quads with the same element. Yeah. Alright. Now there's gonna be no more reading about Orphans. Never again. Where, which, uh, where uh, probably in the next episode there's gonna be something, but no, shh, shh, nothing. There's gonna be nothing. Alright, magic setup. Orphan slots, 1 to 6, are connected by the lines which extend, uh, which extend out from the central slot. In a stellar situation, the slots 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1, 6, 5 are separated into two lines. See right diagram. After quartz is installed, the elemental value of the line it is on will be calculated. See 7. Yeah, so up there you can see there's line 1, which is the 1, 2, 3, 4. And then there's the line 2, which is the 1, 6, 5. So you can see that it still has pretty a good amount of everything except for wind element the wind element she has nothing in that in either lines and because she has uh, water as her central her main uh, I don't know whatever you want to call it the one in the middle the number one because she has water in that it will be on both line one and line two all right uh, when a lines elemental value total reaches the necessary elemental value for a certain art, that art can then be utilized. See, magic. Yeah, that's all those magic one, two, three things that you could just pause the video. Go back and pause the video if you want to look at them again. Alright, skills, crafts, S-crafts, S-breaks. Crafts, unique abilities for each character which are learned when a certain level is reached. In order to use craft, CP craft points is required. CP is gained by dealing out or receiving damage during the battle. Alright, as crafts. These devastating moves can only be used when the CP gauge is 100 plus. Used at 200 CP max, they dish out maximum damage. Really? Uh, I know there is one thing where an ability gets another effect um, as an S craft but dealing out maximum damage mm, I didn't know that then there's the S breaks actions which allow S crafts to be unleashed immediately regardless of the battle order during battle press right or left to select the big red button then press the break button to unleash the attack S crafts 
His crafts, which will be unleashed as S breaks, can be changed by going to tactics and then set S break in the main menu. Yeah, moving on. Battle order. Turn bonuses. In battle, there are various bonuses which can be allotted to turns. Bonus icons. Heal HP. They heal your health by a percentage. If there was 100, that would be bonkers overpowered. Yeah, it would just heal you back to full health in one turn. It wouldn't be fair. <laughs> and then there's strength up, attack or magic damage, which means that also your arts will get more damage. Uh, then there's charge EP, that's an EP recovery, and then there's the CP recovery. Uh, the CP up will only heal for 10, I think. I don't think it will heal for 20, because the maximum is uh, 200. But when the whole bar only indicates 100. So you, when you heal CP up, you only get 10 and 50, if it's 10% and 50%. Alright, then there's the critical attack, magic or recovery effects. It's timed up by 1.5. Yeah, so like when you use the tier on an ally and you get a critical hit, you can even critical hit on heals, which is amazing. Uh, then where you usually heal uh, 200, will now heal 300 instead. Yeah. Alright. And then there's the Sepif up, where you steal Sepif from your target. Which means that if you have an area of effect, ability, or craft, or art, like the game calls it, uh, then you can steal Sepif from all of the ones you hit in that turn. <coughs> Alright. Turn bonuses have the same effect for ally and foe alike. Which means that if an enemy gets the Sepif up bonus, they will also steal Sepif from you. You will lose your resources. Which is cool. And then all the other bonus icons also count as well. <coughs> Alright, using s breaks, which ignore the battle order makes it comparatively easy to jump in and strip an enemy of their turn bonus. So that's how you use s breaks also to take over these bonuses because when you get a strength up by 50% you're gonna deal a lot of damage and the crits also very vital in some situations alright all of these statuses oh you can see all of the things that they do pause the video if you'd like to read them. I can explain the wares off and curable thing too. Um, the wares off means that um, it does not go away unless the, the the effect is triggered. Like the oh sorry about that. Go back. If we take the petrify, uh, then you don't, you can't, you won't have your turn, and it will not wear off. Which means you're petrified. You can't do anything. It won't wear off, and it will only wear off if you're attacked. And if you're attacked, you're KO'd, which is uh, knocked out, and uh, the one at the bottom. <coughs> um, yeah, but. If you stay, if your character stays petrified and the other character, like, ends the battle for you, then petrify will wear off, even though it says it won't wear off. Uh, everything will wear off after a battle has ended. Uh, a new battle will start, only, will only be different from what HP and EP and CP you have uh, currently on your characters. Alright. Then there are these uh, curable things. You can cure almost anything uh, except the immune and uh, the stat increase or decrease things. You can even cure the KO 
Which is a good thing, because if you got KO'd and you couldn't be cured, you probably would lose a lot of XP on that one particular guy. And if you have, if you want to be perfect about uh, the different amount of XP they gain, then you would want to cure the, your KO. Yeah. But uh, all, all of these abnormal, abnormal status effects, they only count in combat. They do not, do not count out of combat. All right, elementals. There's this elemental efficacy or elemental effectiveness. Uh, elemental attacks, physical attacks, or attack arts appearing with a 100% value will be effective in dealing out normal damage to enemies. The higher the percentage, the bigger the damage dealt. The opposite is also true, which means that the lower the percentage, the less damage. Elemental effectiveness example 50 Normal damage cut to 50% Which means that if you use a water art or water attack on this enemy, this coral shell uh, Then it will only deal half damage And normal damage says itself, you deal normal damage if it's at 100% And 200% damage is doubled if you use fire attacks or arts on this coral shell, you'll deal dam double damage. Alright. Cooking. Cooking requires recipe and the necessary ingredients. Recipe can be learned by eating food at a restaurant or eating food items. Alright. Ingredients can be bought at a store or acquired from monsters. There are two types of food, sit-down meals and to-go meals. Sit down eaten when where purchased. Effects extend to all. Not only purchased, but also when made. Like this wholesome pasta. If I make it on the ground right now, I won't... I, I will eat it where I make it. Alright. To go can be used as items in the inventory. I take them along with me. Like, the, I had a few items which were also, which were these uh, to-go things, uh, to-go meals. Uh, they were items in my, uh, in my uh, inventory, yeah. Alright, the recipe screen. There's that one that we went through a little while ago. Recipes you can make appear in white. To make them, select the name. Recipes in grey cannot be made due to a lack of ingredients. But they still show that you have learned them. So the grey ones or the white ones, which has a name, which aren't just question marks, are things you can make, but maybe you can't make them right now because you don't have ingredients enough. Ingredients. Shows ingredients required slash current. Uh, if the amount is insufficient, it will appear in red. Explanation type of food and effects. Uh, that's the description. Explanation type of food and effects. Alright. Pay. BP. Bracer points. Score given by the Bracer Guild when a job has been completed. Perks. When the total BP reaches a fixed amount, the Bracer level will increase and a special item will be awarded. Of course, the pay also includes this, this currency that they all have. The mirror. Alright. Alright, whenever we reach up and go up a level, we get this information quartz, which we can install in one of our characters. I'm probably gonna install it in Joshua. Um, which, which then makes me capable of perceiving enemy status. I can then see what the enemy can do before I even meet the enemy. So that's a very handy thing to have. If you would like to go through the game and be actually be not be surprised too much, uh, then there's the eagle eye, which makes you, which works out of combat, uh, which dots the enemies like small red dots on the minimap. Uh, that's what the eagle eye does uh, when you're out in the field. Uh, also, you can see. 
enemies from a distance. Uh, that means they won't just render in when you get near them, they will be there from a long, long distance away. And so there's the Petrify. I find that particularly good because Petrify is a very strong status effect. And if you have it on your side uh, to petrify the enemy, then at some some occasions you one attack one kill uh, chance. All right, and then there's the haze, make enemies ignore you, which could be good for um, for characters that should stay in the distance. Uh, I don't think it works if. I am going to uh, go in a melee range, like with Joshua. He also has a lot of, of, of HP, so I'm not gonna ex install this haze quads onto him. There's, then there's the strike, the critically strike chance, which uh, is probably very good, but I didn't find it so particularly nice in my playthrough. But we'll see, maybe it gets better. And level 3, there's this death blow 1, 10% chance to kill enemy. It's pretty much the same as the petrify one, but instead of petrifying them so you have to, to attack them another time, then you'll just kill them instantly at that one shot. Alright, then there's the grail luck, immune to status effects. That sounds pretty good, and that's Probably not a quartz, that's probably an accessory. That's probably what it is, a grey lock. And then there's the belt, uh, that's probably also an accessory. Recovers CP during battle. That sounds nice. Alright, we're going to the parameters. There's still a little bit more. <coughs> parameters. Term, HP, EP, CP. Meaning. Hit points, health, whatever, energy points, craft points. All right. If a character is KO'd, character is KO'd if these reach zero. That's for the hit health, the hit points. Makes total sense. Uh, there's the energy points, energy stored within the augment. These are required to use arts. Uh, which means that the more slots you have unlocked, the more augments you have, and the more EP you gain for your character, uh, the more maximum EP you gain anyways. <coughs> and then there's the craft points. Points required to use crafts. These are gained by dealing out or receiving damage during battle. And there's strength. A higher value equals more physical damage dealt. Defense, a higher value equals less physical damage received. And ATS, which is magic strength, a higher value means more arts damage dealt. And magic defense, less arts damage dealt. Received, sorry. Uh, turn speed, speed, a higher value means less time between turns, which means you get your turn frequently, frequentlier than. Uh, you usually do. Uh, dexterity, higher value means easier to land hits. And agility means easier to avoid attacks. Uh, movement means indicates the range of movement for one turn, which are these blue squares in the combat. And range indicates a weapon's firing range, which is it's the orange ring in the combat. <coughs> then there's all the town facilities. That's the Bracer Guild. Uh, we've already been there. We've already been to all of these places. So pause the chat if you would like to see. Yeah. All right. Then there's this tab. Or whatever. There's this. Uh, this is the main quest. They will be highlighted in green. And there will also be a lot of other quests. The side jobs, uh, they will be, they will not be highlighted in anything. They will be grey in uh, writing out here in the side. I have this. Oh, sorry. I have this training retrieval. It's highlighted in green. I've selected it, so I'm reading this now. All right. 
that's all for the items menu. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of lot more. Then there's this uh, tactics. I can choose the character position. Which one do I want to move first? So right now they switch position, and I'm controlling Joshua, and Estelle is following me. And then, oh, sorry, where am I picking? Here, character position. I want to Estelle, Estelle to go first because she is the protagonist. She's le she is leading the way. All right. And then there's the battle position. There, I can control whether I want to Estelle to be up in the front, or I want Joshua to be up in the front, or in the back. I'm gonna make him be out here at the side. And that actually works worked out last time. Uh, or at the start of the game, I'm probably gonna put him right here. Right behind Estelle, but a little to one of the sides. And then there are the S-breaks. Currently, we only have Pommel for Estelle and Sever for Joshua. But as we uh, progress with the game and get more levels, both Estelle and Joshua will gain different S-breaks. So this is the place where I can select those S-breaks. Which one I want to use and which one I currently have. The one I currently have is obviously highlighted in blue, as you can see. Right, that's the tactics tactics window and then there's the option when options window I won't go through that then there's the files where you save load erase your saves we'll never do that there is like a thousand save points so I can pretty much go anywhere uh, I can save a hundred times and I will not have filled it out yet all right ah but we're gonna go ahead and save now because this is the end of the episode, this filler episode. Uh, thank you all for watching, those who did. And we'll see you in the main episode, right, right in the middle. Yes. Bye!